When it comes to the climate crisis, what corporations do over the next few years is existential. And we can't leave it to a small group of people to determine our global fate. No matter what we do for a living, every job is a climate job now. And all of us, every employee, citizen, human being, can build power to change the course of history in our places of work, the economy, and our broader world. So far, the response of most companies to the climate crisis has been defined by constraints. Who gets to work on it? What skills and expertise are valued? What does success look like and who has a say? And most companies set needlessly restrictive climate goals, which set out only to reduce the amount of harm they're causing, instead of also focusing on how they need to use their leverage to help build the thriving, equitable world we need. But we all know that our response isn't anywhere close to adequate. We see it all around us in wildfires, floods. We feel it in our bones. In this, the most all-encompassing challenge we have ever faced, it's the unstoppable, uncontainable force of nature itself that we must emulate in how we rise up to address this challenge. Have you ever watched floodwaters come gushing over a levee or noticed how tree roots will literally break apart concrete in the sidewalk in its pursuit of life? To meet the magnitude of this moment will require that we unleash a power only rivaled by nature itself, opening the floodgates to bring in every solution, every solver, workers from every part of the workforce, bringing technical expertise, but also fresh approaches, diverse backgrounds, creativity, emotional content, and more accountability. The people currently tasked with leading climate response within companies are often small teams that are under-resourced. They've been doing hero's work, but they can't do it alone. And they don't have to. So many people want to contribute. And I've got good news. We know what needs to be done and there are infinite ways to engage. I work for an organization called Project Drawdown. Our team has scoured humanity's wisdom for solutions to draw down heat trapping, climate changing emissions in our atmosphere. Not solutions that exist in a laboratory or an incubator somewhere, but the 80 practices and technologies that materially affect the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Solutions that are already being implemented in the world today. Solutions that, by and large, already existed in order to address another social problem. Solutions that will make us healthier, more resilient, address inequity, improve our cities, maybe even make us happier, all while they address the climate crisis. For example, we know how we can reduce the sources of emissions. How? Well, we can shift to renewable energy like solar and wind, to green buildings that are more efficient, to alternative transportation, efficient and electric, to agricultural practices that are regenerative for the soil, by addressing food waste and our diets, eating more plants and less meat. We can also support and enhance the sinks of carbon dioxide found in nature when we protect and restore ecosystems at land and at sea. And finally, we can educate women and girls globally, which not only addresses climate change, but achieves broader societal transformation rooted in gender equity and human well being. So, this mosaic of solutions gives us a vision for what an equitable, sustainable world can and should look like. But these climate solutions don't scale themselves. In many cases, it's exactly those corporations most responsible for the emissions that cause climate change that have the scale, resources, and obligation to turn the tide. And if those companies want to exist in the era of climate change, then turn the tide they must. And that's where you come in. In our organization's latest publication, we identify a number of accelerators that create the conditions for climate solutions to scale in the world. 
One of them is build power. Building power is a precondition for creating change. In the past, too much power has been deployed against climate action, and too little has been assembled to advance solutions. But do you know who holds real power inside companies? Employees. Employees have tremendous power in building communities like this one, sharing knowledge and best practices across disciplines, and holding their companies to the standard that this challenge demands. And I'm not talking about employees implementing recycling programs or installing compost bins, though both are good starts. I'm talking about workers across the business, from warehouse workers to coders, delivery people to designers, changing the nature of business itself so that business exists as a means to implement climate solutions quickly, safely, and equitably. So let me ask you, do you work at a company that exists, at least in part, to address the climate crisis? Not are they committing to reducing their emissions over time, but are they actually contributing productively to the thriving, equitable, sustainable world we need to build? My opinion is that for the cur our current economic model to survive, the world needs millions of us to be able to answer that question in the affirmative. But my sense is that right now, most of us can't. So how can we, each of us, and as a community with power, be a part of changing the nature of business? What would it look like to make climate central to the business model of every company on earth? How many new skill sets and capacities might that bring to the table? How many new jobs? How much passion? The climate crisis is an incredible opportunity to put all human minds, hearts, and hands to work. A pursuit worthy of expending the sum total of all human energy. So, the place you work right now, how can that entity actually play a role in helping build the world we need? Let yourself imagine. Is it possible? If not, or if it's too hard to see the company you work for getting from here to there, then maybe that company or that sector is not fit for the future we need. But if it is possible and exciting to you, then that is what you should use your power and your skills and your community and this roadmap of climate solutions to build. So far, society has evolved somewhat haphazardly. We didn't have a grand strategy for what the world should be. We didn't dream together and then set out to proactively build the world we wanted to live in. But today, we have an incredible opportunity in front of us, an urgent demand that we radically transform society to address the climate crisis, a tidal wave of people who want to contribute, and a mosaic of accessible and ready to implement solutions that provide the roadmap to get us there. We have been trying to put parameters and constraints around something that is uncontainable. The climate crisis doesn't fit into our neatly defined boxes as much as we wish it would. It spills into every aspect of life, so responding to it with this same level of expansiveness is the only way forward. We know how to get there, but in order to do it, we need everyone. Thank you.